Hello, I'm Margie Jenks, and I'm the president of the Apple Country Woodcrafters. And today we are lucky to have Stan Moore, one of our members, who does comfort birds. And um, Stan will tell you more about how that happens. Yeah, comfort birds were developed about 40 years ago by a man named Frank Faust from Pennsylvania. And he had originally developed these as Christmas tree ornaments in white, but he found out that people loved to hold them, so he made them in hardwood. And as you can see, they're stylistic birds, and you hold them in your hand so that the belly of the birds in your palm and your thumb fits naturally into the tail. And we found that they have a great appeal to people who are in pain or in grief going through treatments. And so we've been giving these away to uh, people in Henderson County and the surrounding counties. For example, I'm from Transylvania County and giving away a lot there. Uh, we'll do a demonstration of how to make these in just a few minutes. First, I'd like to speak a little bit about camp comfort birds because the real purpose of the class, from my point of view, is to have more comfort birds made. Comfort birds are very popular with uh, people who are in pain or in grief or some sort of stress. Uh, they are made very often of hardwood. Uh, here's an example of one made of walnut. And you can see the grain due to the way that uh, the bird is made. The grain really stands out. However, what's important is how it makes a person feel when they hold it. And the best way to hold it is just like this, with the belly of the bird in your palm and then your thumb across the tail. Different people use different designs. This is the way I'm trying to follow the original design by Frank Faust. And it has a little concave section in the tail where your, young, your thumb naturally falls. It has a bit of, of convex curvature in the bottom of the tail so it falls naturally in your hand and the belly. And people really, really like them. As an example, a woman in my church requested I make some for her and her mother. Her mother has Alzheimer's. She takes care of her mother. And she was in tears this last week when I made two to order for her. She was literally in tears when I gave them to her. Now, I normally present them to a person like this. My wife came up with the idea of these natural boxes with a little nest in there. So the bird sits in the nest, and there's a little poem, which you can read later. They sit in there like this. Ed, I'll give one to you too. This one is made of apple. This apple was cut by a member. Both of these woods here were recovered by members of the club, typically cut from trees that were cut down in their neighborhoods. So this one is apple wood. Okay. Uh, the comfort bird concept, we believe, was put together by a man <coughs> named Frank Faust and his wife who lived in Pennsylvania. He started making them in 1982 because he, became, he was a carver who became partially disabled from carving. And so therefore he had to work in a more macro scale. He couldn't do detailed carving anymore. And he started making little doves to go on Christmas trees, according to his son's remembrances. And people just rather preferred to hold the doves off the Christmas trees than hang them. And he thought, well, if we made them of hardwood and made them a little larger, how much better that would be. And it turned out to be very popular. In his life, he made more than 4,000. There are people around the country that are made. Uh, tens of thousands have been made around the country. There's a woman in Chattanooga who has made probably 2,000. Okay? So they were not developed here. They were developed by Frank Faust 40 years ago. How to do it? We start with wood, something we all love and adore, right? We wouldn't be here if it weren't for wood. This is a piece of walnut. You can see we use a basic template to, and I'll give you a copy of the template after the class, okay? And uh, so side template, side profile, top. How do we cut it out of there? We use Mr. Bansall or Miss Bansall if you like it that way. And uh, I will not demonstrate that to you today. You all know how to use the bandsaw. If not, get with the shop superintendent and get qualified to do it. You okay. get with Bill Russell. He showed you how to do it without. So there is that go. basically a two-by-two? Two? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Of course, the actual dimensions you can see are slightly smaller than that, but I use this actually as a two-by-two two turning 
um, blank that I buy out of Wisconsin. Okay. I find some of the best wood in the country comes out of Wisconsin these days. And uh, I've made them from uh, mahogany, cherry, you'll see some of the others here. Um, butternut is excellent due to the grain structure. I've done them out of basswood. And I'll show you some pictures later of some I've done in basswood. Those, of course, need to be painted. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think the finished basswood looks that good. People will disagree with that. Um, depends on what your personal taste is. Okay. This is, so you cut it out, move on to the next stage, and it looks like this. Right? You all know how to get there, right? So the wood, chair. Okay? When it's cut out, it's going to be kind of rough. My bandsaw at home had a bad blade on it, so this one is particularly rough. For this one, okay. For this one, okay. Marking it up for further. We all know that one of the most effective tools of a woodworker is a sharp pencil, or in some cases, a dull pencil. Okay. So two things I do right off the bat. We want the bird to be fairly symmetrical. Now, if you make one that's not quite symmetrical, that's okay because birds, just like people aren't truly symmetrical, all right? So, but we mark the center line on the top. And we can see how with the basic shapes, your eye, since you're a woodworker, you can pick out those basic shapes and forms, right? One thing that I found was very particularly helpful was to take a compass, a good quality compass that doesn't wobble around, put it in here and do a 19, 9 sixteenths radius circle. One of the interesting things that if you're a standard word worker you're not used to working with so much is three-dimensional curves, right? And that's the challenge of any carving, right, Rick? Mm -hmm. Yep. So what we want to do first is take out the wood around this cylinder. Think of the head as being a cylinder that goes down this way. Does that make sense? What we're going to do is take out the wood around that right there. So you do that all the way down, basically? I will show okay. you. But the answer is no. Yeah. No? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask that question myself. But yeah, it's better, it's either better to give a simple right. answer and then demonstrate. What we're going to go for is it looks like this. We can see how the head is now starting to pop out of the wood because we, we now have, to the back of it here is a partial cylinder, right? It's not easy. I found it was a challenge to get that head to look right. And so this is the, the technique the part. that, you know, and this is what everybody that, and there are very, various YouTube videos of how to do this. But they don't do it exactly the same way. This is, I think, a simpler way. At least it's simpler Works for, you. for me. Yep. Okay. Otherwise, you can go watch the YouTube. Okay. Before we even do that, though, what I do typically is use the spindle sander and the belt sander to smooth the sides. You can see it went from that yeah. bandsaw yeah. that I smoothed this off. And be careful if you're using a 60 grit sander, it takes off wood very quickly. Nice. Mm -hmm. Both sides and the bottom. We can see we have our nice belly there for the bird. So there's... I just put that on there. That's the bird's wings. Wings. Okay. But, okay, because birds fold their wings back and they have shoulders just like we do up here, except much more muscular than ours. Uh, unless your first name is Arnold, well, the old Arnold, not the, not the 80 year old Arnold. But uh, at any rate, so those are also steps that we do to smooth this out. Now, let me demonstrate to you briefly. I'm going to use full face shield. I normally also, because of, there is a slight amount of dust raised, and we have great dust collection here. It's always good to say with a president's stamp. Right? Well, I'm yeah. serious. Compared to what I have at home, <laughs> yeah. this is one of the reasons well, I don't I have any at home. And so. it's about to get better. Okay. Super. Well, I, I, that's, I Scott don't... Schaefer gave us $6,000 this year, oh. and we are completely redoing the dust collection system. Now, let's you just touch safety real quick, because safety is, it's not the most important thing. Safety is number three. But safety is really important. I'm a, I'm a micro disciple if anybody doesn't know about safety third. If safety was first, we would stay at home and wrap ourselves in bubble paper. Okay? So safety is not a number. But it's number three and it's critically important. So, but about this, if you see me doing anything unsafe, you let me know. 
But one thing you always want to do is protect your eyes. And what you also want to do is protect your lungs because sawdust is carcinogenic and other things. Okay. Normally I wear a uh, face mask when I use this and you all are welcome to put one on. But uh, at any rate, I like this because I can breathe better. What I do is try to approach the, the belt sander in a way that I can take these notches out. Some people would use this, and I have in the past. I found it's easier to use the belt rather than the disc. Okay. And that's 180 grit. This is 60 grit. Since I'm going to take a lot of uh, material out, I'm going to use the 60 grit. We will use that later. Okay, get where you can see. thing because you didn't come to see me work on the equipment but you can see how you line it up the other side you just line it on the other side be careful if you jam something down in here you're going to have a disaster so think about what you're doing very often I'll work up in the middle you just have to worry about this where it pushes there don't push hard or you tear your belt off okay and that'll be a disaster so work down on this surface unless you're going to do something you need a smoother curve you can work higher but normally, just be very careful and don't jam anything down in the slot. Hey, if you don't have, like I don't, I have this, but I don't have that. I have the flat part for 4 by 36 whatever. Did you say you could use this? Yeah. You can, if you're very careful, you can yeah, put that. basically it's right on the corner here. You can run that right up in here. Okay. But it's hard to get, what I love about this is you can get that flat surface right. on the edge. It's really hard to do on a, on a, a disc. So the belt sander is by far preferable. Now, I will also say, since you asked the question, I don't have any sanders at home except I have a really big old drill press. I use the drill press to do the whole thing. And what I do is I take inexpensive um, spindle sanders or something, disc drum, disc, and I hold it up. It's sticking like this, so I hold it up there and hold it against there and just roll oh, okay. it up like that. That's how I do it at home. I've got that. I've got some sanding. Now, why do you do it on a drill press? That's all I have. I don't have a belt sander. Now. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, again, it's just the old thing. You use yeah. what you have, yeah. and it will do the job. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, any questions about how we get from this to this? You always have to be mindful that it's three-dimensional. Right? Absolutely. And you're working on bringing that, this cylinder or post or however you want to think of the head. Because look at ourselves. You know, we're not birds, but uh, we have a vaguely similar structure. If you're going to do a human, you're going to have to take that head out of the block. Okay, and so, I've carved a lot of doll heads, so I'm really familiar with carving human heads. So you start here and here first. You take, then, you take this off, and so you create the shoulders, the shoulders. Okay. okay? But in the next step, I'm going to show you how we get from this. How we go Different from faces. there of course. to here. It comes prepared. Yeah. There you go. Here. Okay. Okay. All right? Yep. But if you just attack that block, it's hard to get this to come out the way you want. Okay, this is mahogany. We good? Yep. So, I'm going to show the next step that I use is the spindle sander with a small diameter. You can see, you all have worked on this before? Yeah. Okay. You know, there are different size spindles. Yeah. This is approximately, I think that's 60 grit, feels like it. So, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to show you the technique I use to take this down. I'm just moving. Okay.
Okay. You can see that what we're trying to do is on the bird, you can see the neck goes at about a 30 degree angle, like the, the orientation of the pencil here. Make sense? It's not whereas the neck is not. It's a it's pointed like, down. It's 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 because the bird's head is sitting up so that it can move around to do what it needs to do. Feed, look for enemies, look for food, whatever it needs to do. Take care of its kids. Make noise. And so that's what we want to do here. You saw that I was using a turning motion, and that's one way to keep your three-dimensional characters smooth and flowing is to don't just push against it and, and try to dig it out in one area. That's an instinct that particularly we men want to do. I can't speak about what women want to do, but we want to get things done now and we want to dig the stuff out. <coughs> Refrain from doing that. Use some patience, rotate the piece, and have it flow. Okay, have the curve, the circle flow. As I get going, I'll go all the way around the whole thing, just turning the tail and go all the way around on that great surface. If I'm at home working on a thin spindle on the drill press, I do the same thing. And actually, it's easier there because it's hanging almost in midair, right? Okay. So you said all the way around. Do that again. Mm -hmm. you sure. Go all the way around. No, I mean, just you point it at it. I'll do it without running it. Okay. Okay. All right. What I'll eventually do is take it around like this and just continually flow it around, okay? And you will push harder in some areas. Like I know that on this side I'm going to need to work that out because I didn't. But be careful you don't get too deep right in here. But you want to take some out because you want that shoulder. You see where I marked it? I want the pencil. You want that shoulder, that wing piece. It's actually, these are stylized birds. But still, it won't look right if you just have the head as wide as the body, because that's not the way our brain wants to see it. We all know from art, a lot of it is we want to match what the human brain wants to see, right? That's the basis of impressionism, if I remember my education at all. Okay, so at any rate, you continuously go around and you, you dig that out. That good? Okay. So, I'm going to move on to the next step, all right? Next thing we want to do is use the belt sander to round off the bird's body. We're going to use 60 grit because we're going to take a lot off. And again, you want to do this gently, but we want to use two kinds of motions. We want to use a motion like this, a rocking motion. <coughs> we're going to use what I call a sweeping motion, left to right to keep it smooth. Don't just stand here and go and push in because you'll end up with a hole because it's 60 grit and it will dig a hole quickly. Am I right? Absolutely. There we go. And uh, be, be careful with your fingers because that will rip a hole in your fingers. It will. I, I lose fingernails every time I do this. So I'm just going to demonstrate one side. smart thing to do, I don't know if some of you paint or not, but just like when you're painting, don't just work on one area all the time. Work your way around your piece so that everything stays, again, in the same proportion that you want it to. So next I would go to this side, and then I would work this off and this off. What you want to do in the end, okay, your ears can help you here. You go to this, listen. 
Is that round? Heck no. Is this one round yet? No. So we know that it, it has a big flat on it. And something like this can really help. Kind of obvious. This one's not quite where it should be, but it is. Right? Some areas that, that are a challenge is coming down here, don't have the belt sander dig into the tail. If you come down here, I, I would stay back. Okay, you can dig a big hole in here that's hard to recover from. If you do, hey, whatever. But uh, same thing up here, be careful about not digging holes into the neck. I, that's where I used to dig holes a lot, was in the neck. As you bring it around, you're gonna find out maybe like, at least for me, that I need to go back on the spindle sander and go around here again to make the neck deeper so it looks better. Fine. And you can see, if you look online, some, some people don't even put a neck on it. It's just, it's just pretty straight from here on down. I think it looks better with the head, more distinct. It's whatever your personal aesthetic is, your taste. Okay, moving on from here. Any questions? Okay, next thing I do, and I'll use this one that we're already working on. We want to round out this tailpiece right in here because we can't do that very when If you were very, very good and went on the 180 and if you had a really good touch, you could do it. But if you have the spindle sander, why not use the appropriate tool, all right? And the way to do that is with a convex structure, which the spindle sander is. So I'll just go over that real quick. I won't do the whole thing. in there, it's starting to feel okay to your hand, and your hand is, because it's, it's a thing that's made as much for your hand or more for the hand than the eye, use your hand to tell you. And again, I can't feel my fingertips, I can't feel my thumb tip because of my past, but, um, but I can feel it with the rest of them, I can feel it with my left hand. Questions? What you do to your hand? My hands, mm -hmm. they've been way too cold too much. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is make the concave thing. This is a touchy thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get on here, we're gonna gently take it out, okay? Show you the way that I really smooth that out later with, with uh, my hand sand. Okay. So it doesn't take much to start that thumb. Oh. Right. You just but you just be very gentle in there. And as you do more of them, you find you push harder at first, take out a lot, and then clean it up. But you want to move it back and forth. And again, at the end of that sweep, as it goes up and down, you end up with the nub there. And if you're very gentle, you can even eliminate that if you're very gentle. Okay, but you have the idea on that, right? And then finally, we want to round this off here, and you can do that either using the spindle sander or the belt sander. We'll just use the belt sander. 